Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. My name is Howard and today we are doing day 10 of Advent of the Cyber Challenge. It looks like someone is messing with Elf Max Kitty and they changed their name in a video game that we were, we were given. So our main goal today is to go and play this video game and defeat it and be able to recover Elf Max Kitty's name that was really butchered in this case. Our learning objective is to learn how data is stored in memory and use simple tools to find and outer memory. So this is memory exploitation, where if you know how to interact with memory, you can actually alter how an application works and even take over a system. So in this case, we are given a video game that if you launch our machine, open Google Chrome, it might take a second. I'll move myself out of the way here. If it says the, uh, it's insecure, just bypass the insecure page. But we are given a game here. So our main objective is to play the game and use a tool called Citus that we can find in the developer tools, just like this. So let's go and find the tool called Citus. So click on the three dots at the top. Uh, more tools, developer tools. And in developer tools, we need to go to here and Citus. If it does something like this, I think we can refresh the page. So Citus loaded and everything that I just did is in the screenshots here. All right. So first we need to play the game and guess the guard's number. Then once we guess the guard's number, I think we'll be able to get the first flag. And these steps here walk us through how to do it. But it's very simple. Our main objective is we have to escape from this prison and we can use the space bar to play the game and the arrows move up and down. Let's go towards the guard. Let's talk to the guard quick. Use the space bar. Hey there, welcome to my first five star prison. How are you? Hope you enjoy your stay. Hey guard, actually I'm trying to escape. Any suggestion? No. Besides jail is as secure as it gets. So this is a very secure uh, jail. The only way out is through the door behind the guard, so right here. And I'm not opening it for you, so we can say sure. Guard is saying no. Alright. So let's make a deal. I'll think of a number between 1 and 999999999. If you can guess it, you're out. Okay, so the guard is to think of this number. And in this game, this number is going to be stored in memory as soon as the guard thinks about it. In actual effect, it's actually stored in memory the moment we uh, launch the game. And we are asked to guess it. So it, any random number, I'll just guess. Okay. The guard said, oh, that's wrong. My number was this one. So if the guard's number was 476-59690, we can go and search for that number. Find out in this game's memory, which is read on uh, RAM memory, where is that value saved? There is going to be a space where this value is saved. We can find it, and it's going to be saved in the same spot over and over again every time we uh, regenerate the game. So it's safe to say if we know it's stored, we can just search for that place and then come back. The guard would have thought about a new number and put it in the same spot. So let's go find out where in this game's memory is this number. 5762706 so let's search for a value that's equal to that all right so we get a value here so this value is in hex which is uh so this 5762706 is equivalent to this to make sure that we verify that so i'm i'm using uh repeat tables hex to binary you can use side by chef or whatever you want but um what is what was my hex value? That if we convert it, you notice that it's five seven six two seven seven. So it's the same thing. So now that we know it's in on this memory address, this address is going to be used the next time we reload the the game. The guard comes up with a new number. So let's bookmark this. Okay. If we go to our bookmarks, we now have our value and what it is. So if we reload the game, the guard thinks of a new number. Let's reload the game. So notice that uh, right now the value is at zero. Let's go and interact with the guard. All right. So the second time we interact with the guard, we get this value here. 
You can go and decode it. It ends with 10C. Let's convert it to our regular value. 7, 7, 7, 80. 7, 4, 4, 32, 7, 80. And hit enter. As you can see, the gate opened because we had the value. What if we can also just change this value and put it to whatever we want because we can modify it. In fact, I just did that a little bit ago. So now that the gate opened, let's see if we can keep talking to the guard. Oh, I just passed it. There was a flag. There we go. THM five star flags. So that's our flag here. Let's go and type it. All right. So we ended our flag, first flag that we were given. Next, we have to see if we can make it through the tunnel all the way to the end of the tunnel. And for us to do, to do that, let's see if we can walk. Okay, so notice we have a health bar here. Our health, we don't know what number it is at. It might be a five, it might be a 10 or a hundred uh, percent. But these balls here, if they hit us, we're going to lose health. So let's try, okay. Here's the story. Let's see if we can just run. Run, 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 run. Oh no, we got defeated. So that's a problem. That's a really big problem because now we're sent all the way back here and we, we have to talk to the guard again. Lucky enough for us, we have it opened. But this time we don't we don't we don't want to deal with these balls here. There's a, a few things that we can try to control. We can try to control the balls, but we don't know how they are moving or what uh, determines the frequency and everything. But we can try to figure out what is our health? How are we getting this health here? And as you know, this health is probably stored somewhere in memory so that every time we get hit, it keeps decreasing. All right, so for us to know how our health is cha changing, we don't know where, in which memory address it's located. So we'll search for all of them list us all the memory addresses then after we see all the memory addresses we'll get hit by one of those balls our health goes down then we'll search for less than to see which one's changed we'll keep getting hit until we are, we are able to narrow it down to the actual value of the memory because there's a lot of things that change but the one for our health will keep changes changing consistently so with our differential search we'll be able to see so first let's look list all the memory addresses right now with a blank and we just do a search you see that we have 458 700 results now let's go and get hit by one ball not too much we got hit by two we might have to do this again now let's search for less than because we want to see the ones that are now less than um, the previous value now we have 15 results. <laughs> Let's go hit, get hit by one more ball again. But this time, not two. Oh, okay. Now let's say for another less than, we have three results. So from these three results, you can see that the number 10 here kind of stands out. The other ones are probably bigger numbers. Uh, so these two here will give us smaller numbers in real value. So looks like we have the value 10. I'll bookmark that because I'm suspecting that's the one for our health. And I'm almost like almost done here. So I'm thinking it's like 10%. So let's bookmark that. Then I'll go to my bookmarks. So here's 10. Let me move and see if I get hit and I die and this goes to zero, then I know <laughs> this is the real value. All right. Oh, actually, it didn't go to zero. It went to 100. So that means that I actually have... It went to zero, then became 100. So th this shows me that this is 100% health. We can prove it by going again and walking and seeing it actually uh, change. Or we can just go and va validate, uh, change it. Let's see. Get hit m multiple times. Look at that. It's changing with every ball. So that's our value. Simple thing that we can do is we can just give ourselves any value that we want. So I may be um, 9,568. That's my new health now. So that means that I can just walk <laughs> and get hit and it won't affect any, any, anything. 
So this is memory exploitation. I'm modifying the memory of the system in order for it to think that something is different. Okay, now I'm getting hit. It's changing, but not that much. So I can be here all day and, well, not all day, but <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, uh, maybe I put it too big of, of a value, but now I am walking through. Yay, now I'm the bandit Yeti and I get the spiel. At this point, I just want to sit there. I'm getting hit by a cloud and I survived. Now, I think I have to interact with this dude to get my flag. Or do I need to get out, out of here? All right. You get the name back and a flag. THM Yeti 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 flag, 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 flag. Okay. We got it. At first, I thought this was going to be difficult because I don't d deal with memory analysis that much. But this was a fun way of learning how you can manipulate memory and also using CIRAS as a tool. If you really like this, please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video. Otherwise, I hope to see you tomorrow for another one.